Hey folks, uh, this lesson follows uh, module 1.2 that's uh, graphing calculator exercises in here. So um, uh, I'm going to be using a TI-84 uh, calculator on here. So uh, we're going to model with a linear function. So uh, we're going to be given a set pair of data. So we'll have some X values and some Y values. And we're going to use our graphing calculator. I'm going to call it GC to make a scatter plot just to see if it's uh, close to if they plot to uh, close to a line a linear function and then we're going to uh, do what's called a perform a linear regression which means we're going to get a y equals mx plus b form and they call it y equal ax plus b so the it's the linear equation that best fits the line and then we'll use that equation to make predictions or the or a fancy name is to make extrapolations or interpolations okay so here we go we're going to perform a linear regression for the given situation to make predictions okay so for the Gabe and Garrett channel uh, Brian takes pictures for a week at Disney World and when they return for their trip Brian deletes some of the photos on the memory card saving only the best uh, for his uh, the best photos for his new adventure video so uh, the table shows the number of photos he kept from those stored on a memory card in a week right here. So there's seven data here. So here's seven days. He took this many photos on each day, and then, uh, then he, uh, he only kept these photos here. So we're going to use a graphing calculator to create a scatter plot. So a scatter plot is just this x and this y graph, and this x and this y graph, and this x and this y graph. Typically, your first column is your x column, and this is our y columns right here. So we're going to use that scatter plot to find a linear regression model, which is an equation for that. Uh, and then graph the model. We'll graph the line, and we'll use the model to predict uh, the number of photos uh, he's going to keep if he takes 150. Okay, so. Here we go. We're going to go ahead and plug in um, uh, x or all our x values. Here's our x values into list one. It's going to be our our list one right here. Okay. Then we'll plug these into list two right here. So this list one will be x's and list two will be uh, uh, the y's right there. Okay. Again, I'm using the graphing calculator right here. And then we're going to use a viewing window that shows the x values from 100 to 200. I noticed they always give you a viewing window, and if they didn't, then you just hit zoom stat right here. Okay. So anyways. We'll talk more about this in just a second right here. So let's go ahead and put these numbers in list one and these in list two. So I have a calculator right here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go to stat and then we go to edit. And so that's number one right there. So we just hit number one. It's going to take us there. I've already loaded them in there, but we would hit 117 enter, 128 enter, 140 enter, 157, all the way down to 170 enter. And then to get to list two, we'd hit the scroll over button. And I'm just saving time. I'll do this for us in our second problem right here. It's a smaller problem. Okay. And then uh, now that we got them loaded in there, then we make sure that we have a viewing window with uh, X goes from 100 to 200 in a scale of 10. And then the Y goes from 0 to 60 with a scale of 10. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means or that means. But now we're going to go ahead and graph these guys. Okay, so there's a scatter plot. Can you see these kind of trend in an upward manner right here? All right, so let's go back to see what it tells us to do right here. Okay, so, so we have, um, uh, so here it is, all plugged in, list 1, list 2. And so here's our viewing window that they're talking about. And it's going to give us this uh, uh, click graph. When you hit uh, click graph right there, it gives us that scatter plot. So right here is graph. So I just hit graph right there, and it gave us this scatter plot right there. Okay. All right. I'll do the other one a little bit slower. This one just takes a little bit longer, so it's already preloaded right there. And then notice that the trend appears to be roughly linear. Okay. With this uh, y values generally increasing as it go as x values. Here's x values. The photos taken. So as x gets larger, y tends to get larger right here. It generally goes up right there. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to perform a linear regression line and so what we got to do is we're going to go to stat and then scroll over to calculate and hit linear regression which is number four okay we'll do this all together here 
And then right here, this start part right here, we're going to have to store our linear regression. It's going to give us y equals ax plus b, which is mx plus b. Okay, and we're going to have to store it in y sub 1. If we don't store it in y sub 1, I'll show you how to do that, what is this stuff right here, then it won't graph it, and we won't be able to let us uh, see how close our line is. Plus, it lets us predict it better. All right, so to get y sub 1, we're going to go to vars, y val, vars, enter, Okay, so I'll show you all of this right here. Let's go ahead and do this right here. So, so we're going to grab, so we're going to go to stat. I'm going to scroll over to calculate right there. Number four, we're going to hit linear regression. So number four, okay. Now, we're grabbing it from list one is our x values. List two is our y values. And then we're going to store this in uh, y sub one. So this is where we got to plug in y sub one. Okay, in the TI calculators, y sub one is hiding in vars, which stands for variables. Y vars, so we're going to go ahead and store this in, and it's hiding in here function. Okay, all right, so there it is right there. So there it is. Now we got it stored, and now we're going to go scroll down to calculate. And when we hit calculate, it gives us this screen right there. Okay, so here it is right there. So if we didn't hit that Y stores, it would give us it. Now, if you get this screen right there, and I did in the beginning, so if you have a uh, TI calculator, and you only get that without the, the R squared stuff, without this stuff right here, the R and the R squared, then what you got to do is you got to go into catalog, and your catalog is second function zero. So I've already done that, and it just takes, saves some time. There's catalog right there. It's above the zero, so you got to hit second function zero and then you got to go turn your diagnostics on so scroll down it's in alphabetical order you'll see diagnostics off and you hit diagnostics on you, you press enter twice and when you do that it'll say done and then recalculate it and after you re got to recalculate it and then you get your uh, R and R squared and so that R squared the R stands for correlation coefficient that's more of AP stat stuff but it it measures uh, if it's positive then it tells you that the points are going up if it's negative it tells you that the points are going down so it tells you the direction and the closer R is to one then the closer that it's to a line those closer the points are to a line so if R is close to negative one then just square it as long as R squared is close to one 1.72-ish is close to 1, so it's close to a linear regression right there, okay? So now we're going to graph that model along with the regression line, okay? So here we go. We're going to hit graph again, and since we have that y sub 1 stored in there, we, we stored this in y sub 1. Here it is right there. There it is right there, 0.331 minus the 11 point something. So we're going to hit graph. It's going to graph list one, list two together, the scatter plot plus. Now there's the linear regression line right there, okay? All right, so now what we're going to do is just use that. Um, uh, so here's the photos kept. Here's the photos taken right there. So the linear regression line has that equation, and we can use that to extrapolate. Okay, so uh, notice um, uh, that they're all close to the line right there. If this point wasn't there, then it would make R closer to 1 right there. Okay, so that was one of the, he took lots more pictures that day or something. All right, so now we're going to use the, the predictions right there to predict uh, 150. So we just plug in 150 right there for the X's. X was how many photos he took. So if you plug it in, he gets about 38 photos. Now watch, if we do this, as long as we plug this into Y sub 1, calculate is right there. So if we hit second function calculate, and then we hit value, we're going to calculate an x value of 150 right there, and it just calculates it for us right there. You get about 0.38.3, so he's going to keep about 38 photos right there, okay? All right, pretty slick right there, huh? All right, so uh, here's another one right there, okay? So it gives us that little point right there. So there's um, uh, 150, x equals 150, he's going to keep about... Uh, y equals about 38 photos right there. Okay, so here's another one right here. For a statistics project, Melissa is studying the relationship of cars and mileage and uh, miles per gallon and speed in miles per hour. So here's the table that she shows of uh, the speed and the miles. So notice it kind of trends down. The faster you go, the less miles per gallon you use. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing and predict it when uh, where she's driving at 20 miles per hour. Okay, so let's create a scatter 
scatter plot right here. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and do that right here. Let's. Uh, so now we gotta. What we gotta do is we gotta clear out everything. Well, here's memory right here. So first we gotta take that equation out. If we don't take that equation out, so hit clear. Okay, uh, it'll graph that equation right there and it'll mess everything else. And then we're going to clear the list. So now we're going to hit second function memory. All right, clear all lists is number four. And then we're going to go ahead and recalculate. Okay, so let's go ahead and do stats, edit. Now we're going to plug in those points right there. And then those points, uh, make sure you're in list one. I'm in list two. So go into list one and let's see, we had, we had 30, we had 40. 50, uh, 60, uh, finally 70, and then we got to, don't forget to hit enter right there, and then we got to scroll over for list two right there, and we had 34, 33.5, uh, what was that, 31.5, 29, finally 27. Point five, okay, and then we got to hit a, we're going to hit graph, okay, and then I think it told us to do a a, a zoom window. So if we don't do a, a zoom stat right here, let's watch. So zoom stat, it zooms it in on our statistics that are in our calculator right there. So there's the graph right there, but I think they told us to do a viewing window right there, okay. So uh, what do the x and y represent? Well, the x represents. Um, uh, the car's speed, the Y represents the mileage. So there's, there it is right there. So what's our viewing window? Well, our viewing window has to go from uh, these values right here to cover these values. So we can go from 0 to 80 and then go from uh, 0 to 40 if you want, but we did zoom stat right there. And is it very linear? Yeah, these are pretty linear right there. Okay, so, so they are. So let's perform a linear regression and we're going to write the equation. So that's where we go back to this and we're going to go ahead and, and do uh, stat, stroll over to calculate right there. We're going to do number four and then uh, don't forget we got to plug it into y sub one. So we're going to, that's in hiding in variables and then y variables and then just hit enter for function and there it is right there. Okay and then we just go down to calculate and then if we didn't do that it wouldn't graph that line and it wouldn't give us a nice prediction line right there. Okay, so there it is, all right there. So here it is, uh, got it right there. Okay, so the line, uh, the regression line is uh, this equation right there, and our domain, it said, what's the domain? Remember, we started at 30 miles an hour and we went to 70 miles per hour. Look at R and R squared, really close to one. So that just tells us it's a really strong line. Those points are all representing a line. So what can you say about the goodness of fit right there? Okay, so there it is when we re-graph it right there, hit graph, and it should give you that right there. And as expected from the fact that the y value r, or the value of the correlation coefficient r, uh, is very close to negative 1, the line passes through or comes close to passing through all the data points. They're really linear right there. So now we're going to predict it right there. So when we predict it, we're going to plug in 20 right there. And when you plug in 20 right there, it's going to give us that. Now, if I did it on a calculator right here, uh, I get 34.6. If I did it on this calculator, watch what happens right here. If we do calculate, which is second function calculate right there, and then uh, hit enter, and we plug in 20 right there. Whoops, I didn't do it right there. Uh, we're going to plug in 20. Uh, it's going to give us an error message. Well, that's because our view window didn't cover... Um, uh, let's see, our view window didn't cover 20, so if we just make this and make it go back to zero right there, and then if we hit graph and then recalculate it again, okay, so it gives us a different one where x equals zero starts way back here, and then we're going to do calculate, and then we do that, and then it'll give us 20. Our view window just didn't have 20 in it. It was at 26. It gives us about 36.4-ish right there, okay? All right, you guys, so we should get about 36.4. And if you're in my class, I'm going to sign you that. Take care.